Welcome back to Penguin Week with Sandy Allnock. Today we've got a purple penguin pair in pencil. I got out my colored pencils when I saw these cute little impression obsession penguins. Aren't they adorable? So I just picked out a couple of really sweet little colors because I didn't want to do the traditional gray or black types of penguins. Cause you know, we always make things the same color. So why not do something a little bit different? This will make them a little more playful, a little more fun. And it's also going to be fun to play around with mixing colors. And I always encourage the mixing of colors. In my Color Pencil Jumpstart class, if you've not heard about that or if you don't know about it yet, then I suggest that you check it out because there are really fun color charts where you can practice mixing different shades and seeing what happens with them. And you can learn all about different colorways and color theory. A lot of the things in the class are very similar to what happened in Copic Jumpstart. So if you're not a Copic user, but you saw all those cool people learning cool and interesting things about color theory, you too can learn them with color pencil. And there's, of course, a link in the description, as always, to my classes over at art-classes.com. So in coloring my purple penguins, I'm layering the blue and the pink on top of each other using very, very light layers. And I'm keeping my pencil nice and sharp so that I get a, a nice crisp little line that I can fill in the crevices on the paper. The paper that I'm using here is Stonehenge, Stonehenge drawing paper, which I have come to love, 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 love for my colored pencils because of the texture that it has. I love the way that it works. You can use your Gamsol and baby oil type of blending techniques, but you can also do like I'm doing here and just let the pencil do its thing and that sort of stuff. I've stamped this in a Lawn Fawn dye ink and you can use all kinds of different inks with colored pencil. Fortunately, they are not the type that care a whole lot about what kind of ink you use because if you let your pigment inks dry, you can use pigment inks with them, use your dye inks, etc., without having too much worries. Uh, and what I did with these was to do second generation stamping because I wanted the pink ink to stay really light. I didn't want it to be really heavy pink outlines. So that, in order to do the second generation stamping, I put a scrap into my Misty so I could stamp it on that first and then the second stamping was what ended up on the actual paper. That made it a little bit lighter and a little easier for me to recover as I'm trying to add more of my colored pencil here. This Inden Throne pencil, uh, Inden Throne is one of my favorite Daniel Smith watercolor types of colors and it's kind of nice to know that the uh, the folks who make these pencils also do the same. They have the same kinds of colors in a lot of cases. So this nice navy blue allows me to feel like I'm making penguins that are black um, because I've got a nice rich color. I could just use a very light purple color and they'd look totally cartoony, but here I, I'm able to add a dark blue that adds that feeling that, that these are darker animals rather than just totally silly purple. I'm mixing pink and yellow in a couple layers in order to create an orange for the bow. And I did try using this little kind of reddish purple pencil for the bow for some of the shadows. Did not like that. Was kind of bummed that I ended up doing it, but there you go. Sometimes you just pick a color that didn't quite work. Should have tested that out more, but it was not enough of a bother to stress me out to start all over again because I really liked where the rest of this was going. Now to create the white parts of the penguin, remember that there is color in white. Just because it's white doesn't mean it doesn't have anything in it at all. Penguins have like little feathers. They're birds. So you want to make a birdie type of texture to them if you want to make them all look fuzzy and cute. So I'm using a very, very, very light touch with a light gray pencil first. And then I'm going to add some more detail with a darker gray pencil. And of course the shading is going to be at the bottom because the sunlight would be coming from the top. 
most penguins would not be in a place where they would have too much lamplight coming from other places. So you can generally trust that the shadows should be at the bottom and not at the top. And the color is getting a little on the intense side for me here, but I do have a plan that I'm going to use to, to rectify that at the end. Because uh, as I was doing this, I was thinking this might be the perfect example to show you how to lighten things. When you get a little too heavy handed, which happens sometimes because we get carried away or you're trying to fix something. And so I'm using a combination of the dark gray and then some of that navy blue, that Indian throne blue, in order to create some of this, this little texture in the fur and to try to create some of that depth. And it's it's darker than I wanted, but that's okay, because I, I know I can fix it. I'm gonna go in and add a little bit of detail in those beaks and underneath the beaks and in the eyes. And this is one of those places where you can also adjust what the, um, the expressions on their faces look like. If you want them to be bigger and smilier or have really big wide eyes because they're shocked at something or that sort of thing, be kind of fun. You could also use little penguins like this and add a balloon in their hands with another balloon stamp that you might have or just draw one in. All kinds of fun stuff you can do with a little pair of penguins like these. So speeding up this other penguin, but using the very same process to create that nice texture underneath his belly. So he's got nice little, little feathery looking stuff. I decided to add a tiny bit, just ever so slight bit of background to them. And that's always a challenge when you're working with color pencil because it does take a long time to do. That's why I end up doing so many of these speed videos when I get out my color pencils or we could be here for hours. And I'm just going to add just a haze of a halo of light blue around them. But then I wanted to lighten all of that gray that I put in there. So I'm taking my kneaded eraser and basically just pressing into each of those areas that I wanted to lighten. And you might need to go back in if, you're erasing, if your erasing was a little on the uh, overdone side, if you end up erasing some of the other colors. But it lightened all of that nicely, but I still have that texture that remained from some of the darker color that I put in there. So it's really helpful to use that kneaded eraser to soften everything up. So that's about it for this penguin. I will meet you again right here tomorrow for another penguin card because it's penguin week. And the supplies are all linked in the description below as well as on my blog as well as the, the pinnable images. So meet you over there.